So you're thinking about building a small solar system, maybe for a shed or a camper or an RV, or maybe just for emergencies? What a coincidence, so am I. Let's go figure it out together. All right, so let's say that you really don't need the portability of something like one of these power stations here, these portable power stations. Maybe you want something more permanent mounted, either in an RV or a van, or maybe a shed. Let's say you wanna build your own solar generator system that can grow with you. Well, you're gonna need a few basic components to start, and that's what we're gonna do. So first of all, you're gonna need a way to store your power. So you're gonna to have to start with a battery. So the system we're gonna to build together here is a, I would call it a small, system that's expandable. I'm gonna use a 100 amp hour battery. And some of these components were given to me, like Ampere Time did provide this battery for me, this uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. And then Bouge RV provided the charge controller, because you're gonna need a way to get the power from the solar panels into the battery. So that's where the charge controller comes into play. So we don't just wanna store power, right? We wanna be able to use it too. So we need an AC inverter. So I bought this particular inverter with my own money off Amazon because I wanted to do this video and I didn't have all the pieces that I needed. Uh, so I needed more than just a battery and a charge controller. Now this is a 2000 watt pure sine wave uh, inverter. So it handles 2000 watts continuous and up to 4000 watts peak. Now that's probably overkill for what we're gonna be using here. It's probably at least double of what I really need. But again, I'm wanting to build a system that I can easily expand. So I'm gonna have the components in place that all I need to do if I wanna expand this is add another battery and, and then add another solar panel or two. And then I've instantly got a significantly larger capacity system. So this is gonna be a great sort of entry level size, a starter size, if you will, uh, for a solar generator, something that would be appropriate for uh, a little small workshop shed if you want to be able to power lights and fans and that kind of thing. This would be absolutely uh, more than adequate for something like this. You could actually power some power tools for a reasonable periods of time with this size system as well. But so what else do we need? Now all these other items I'm gonna show you, these are all things that I bought with my own money. So again, the only things that I've actually been uh, sponsored with for this video are the charge controller and the battery. So uh, I did buy some, this is a eight gauge battery cable from Amazon. This will allow me to go from the charge controller uh, to the battery. I do wanna add the capability to use DC power directly instead of not, not just AC power. So I picked this up off of Amazon. This is kind of cool. It's got an on off switch. Uh, it's got a little volt meter so I can see how much uh, volts this thing is currently drawing. And then it's got a couple of uh, low power uh, type C USB ports and then a 12 volt uh, socket here so that I can uh, power a 12 volt refrigerator off that if I want to. So that's gonna be cool. I've not actually done one of these before, but this is gonna be fun. This is just a box of miscellaneous wire tie down. So once we get this all set up, we're gonna to wanna to clean up the install. So since I'm gonna be doing some cutting and crimping of cables, I bought myself a decent quality uh, crimper. That's obviously optional, depending on whether or not you need to crimp your cables. I wanna keep my cable runs nice and short for maximum efficiency. So I figured I might as well go ahead and get a crimper while I'm at it. Got a, a wire stripper. Now this is designed for heavier gauge wire. So that'll be handy. Uh, wire cutter. So this is just some wire snips. I always look at these kinds of videos as an opportunity for me to buy new tools. So I got miscellaneous uh, copper connectors and, uh, and shrink tubes. So heat shrink tubes. So these are gonna be ways when I'm making uh, cable connections that I can uh, terminate properly with a proper sized uh, connector, terminal connector, and then make sure that it's uh, properly covered and heat shrinked so it doesn't contact something unnecessarily or unexpectedly. Now to protect your devices and, and reduce the risk of something like fire uh, and for unexpected circumstances, uh, you're gonna want a fuse or circuit breaker. Now something like this, this is a 200 amp fuse, and you'd normally position this between the positive uh, terminal on the battery and the positive terminal on the inverter. Now another way to do to go about that, and so I'm probably not actually gonna use that fuse, instead I've got a 200 amp uh, waterproof uh, breaker. So this is gonna enable me to basically very easily disable power to the battery from the inverter and vice versa. Uh, if I want to do some work so I don't have to disconnect cables, I can just simply trip the breaker and disconnect power. And then between the battery and the charge controller, I've got a 50 amp breaker. So other than some miscellaneous wires and connectors, 
uh, that's about it. And obviously a little piece of plywood that I can mount all this on. So now that I've got all this laid out and you kind of got an idea of what the various pieces and parts are, and by the way, I'll put links to these uh, pieces in the, in the description of the video if you're interested in seeing uh, what they are and how much they cost. But let's go to a workspace where I can spread out and actually uh, start uh, laying out the parts on the board and figure out where I'm going to put everything. So let's go do that and we'll just kind of figure out how all this works together. All right, I've got my two by two plywood laid out here. This is just uh, basically half inch thick plywood. And I need to figure out how I want to arrange my uh, inverter and my charge controller. And I've got a couple of these breakers here. This breaker obviously is going to sit between the charge controller and the inverter. And then this breaker down here is going to sit between the inverter and the battery. And then I also need to figure out where I'm going to put my uh, 12 volt uh, accessory ports here. So I think I'm going to just put those right down here and I'm going to just basically take these things out and then use this uh, little face plate as a guide to draw the holes where I can drill right into the plywood. Now it looks like I've got a lot of extra space here on the left. So I think I'm just going to draw a quick line here and then I'm going to uh, rip down this board so that I don't have all this extra space on the side that I don't really need. Two hours later. All right, so I've got my uh, my mounting plywood here uh, ripped down the side to remove the excess surface area. And I've got my main modules here, my uh, solar charge controller mounted and my inverter mounted. And then I've got my 50 amp fuse mounted here and my 200 amp fuse mounted here. By the way, I didn't mention this uh, in the other earlier part of the video, but Highly recommend getting a decent multimeter and uh, being able to use that to test your connections, um, test the output from your solar panels. You can test the current voltage on your uh, batteries. Um, just really great for troubleshooting and uh, great for knowing exactly what's going on and also making sure that the data you're getting here matches the data that you're getting directly off the battery or from your test leads um, from your multimeter. So. Highly recommend that. Now I wanted to point something out with this charge controller here from Bouge RV. This is about $150 and it is an MPPT charge controller, also known as a, let's see, this is a maximum PowerPoint tracking, I think is what MPPT stands for. This is a very cheap, inexpensive alternative. And I use the term cheap and inexpensive because it is inexpensive for sure, because it only costs about $20. But this is a case of, of uh, you get what you pay for. Um, it is very cheap in addition to being inexpensive. So this is a rated at 20 amps, um, whereas this one is rated at 40 amps. So obviously there's a big difference there. This is also a PWM type charge controller, uh, which isn't bad just based on the surface, you know, just on the fact that it's a PWM, that's pulse width modulation. Uh, but this is not going to be as efficient at drawing power out of your solar panel and, and charging your battery as the MPP type charge controllers will be. Um, the other thing that really makes me leery about using something like this, when you've got a lithium ion battery in particular, something that is fairly expensive, I mean, these things run several hundred dollars. Do you really wanna take a chance on cooking that battery if something goes wrong with a 15 or $20 charge controller? I personally, don't think that's a fair trade-off. So I would rather not use one of these, even though it's a very low price of entry. I would much rather use something like this, which is in the $150 range, uh, but very, very well made. So that's just my little rant on cheap charge controllers. So now that I got everything mounted, we need to uh, connect the wires that are going to connect to our solar panels. As I mentioned, this is the system is designed to be expandable. Um, this one little pigtail that I've got here to an Anderson connector, I can plug into the PV side, which is going to be these two terminals right here. And this I'm just going to kind of tie down here, and then this will go to a an adapter with uh, MC4 connectors on it that I can use to connect to my 200 watt Bouge RV uh, rigid solar panel. So that'll be fine for a single solar panel, but with the gauge of this wire, um, if I wanted to hook up, say, two 200 watt solar panels, I would want a heavier gauge wire than this rather than, because this, this wire is only really spec'd for a maximum of about 10 amps. And um, that should be fine for, for most circumstances with a single 200 watt solar panel. But uh, you definitely do want to make sure that your wires are properly gauged to the current that they're going to be handling. So uh, that said, let me put that aside. Now, really, I've, I've just got to make my wire termination. So this is the fuses are going to be always on the positive or the red wire. So I'm going to be taking 
This is the larger one. This is going to go to the bottom of this fuse, and this is going to go directly to the battery. But then I need to also take the positive here to the positive on the inverter, then the positive on the inverter to the positive on this 50 amp fuse, and then over here the positive up to the charge controller. So these will all be red wires. And then the black or common wire, um, the smaller one, I'm going to need to, uh, to cut this to fit from here over to the common on the inverter. And then I've got the main, obviously the main battery cable that'll come down uh, from, the, from the common on the, or the negative on the inverter and goes straight to the battery. So the only other thing uh, is these little DC connections. So um, I did drill the holes, as you can see. So that actually worked out really, really cool. Um, the only thing is, is that it didn't occur to me, the width of this half inch drywall or uh, half inch plywood is gonna be a problem. I'm not gonna be able to use the little uh, retaining ring on the bottom side of the drywall to cinch this particular little voltmeter down. There's not gonna be enough thread sticking out to do that. So I think the solution there for me, um, instead of just trying to drill a bigger hole, which will be a little bit of a challenge without a drill press, is I'm just gonna actually put some super glue around this little flange and then just super glue this into place uh, once, I, once I get it where I want it. So I think that's gonna be the easy, easiest solution there. Um, everything around it's gonna be cinched down and then the faceplate itself is gonna be screwed into the, the panel. So that's gonna look nice when I get it all set up. Now, before I uh, go ahead and get my cable terminations all set up, I wanted to go ahead and directly wire the uh, battery to the inverter without the fuses, uh, just so I can test the inverter since I uh, this is a brand new inverter and I've not tested it before. Go ahead and get this plastic off of there. All shiny and new. I kind of wanted to see what the display looks like. So let's turn this thing on and hopefully we don't see any sparks. Cool. So there's actually a color display. We've got 13 volts DC in. We're outputting uh, 111 volts out of this. So I can hook appliances up to this right now and actually run them. So that's pretty neat. All right, I got a floor fan here. Let me just go ahead and plug this in. Let's see if it fires up. Yep, I'm assuming you can hear that. It's actually right over there. All right, so we know the inverter works. I'm gonna go ahead and take these wires back off and then go ahead and do the wire terminations as I had originally planned them. All right, so I got all my wire terminations done. You can see I've got the uh, everything nice and tied down here. Uh, this is a little pigtail to my Anderson connector that goes to my solar panels. Um, I've got my breakers currently tripped here, so I'm not getting any power. Um, I've gone ahead and hooked up my uh, positive negative leads to the battery. And uh, I'm just gonna test everything. You'll notice some discoloration down here on the voltmeter on the uh, little DC panel. I, I ended up having to, to super glue this, and so I went and, you know, and bought some of this Loctite uh, super glued gel. It's supposed to dry clear, uh, but it didn't. It, it dried kind of white chalky hazy. I got some of it off. I probably used too much. Maybe that was my problem. Taking a quick look at the back of the panel here, these are the DC ports that I had mounted. And these came as all one block, by the way. And they're, you know, attached to one single faceplate. And each one is, is held by these retaining rings. And you can see where the, the meter, this is the little voltmeter module, uh, didn't have enough uh, thread sticking through the plywood. So that's the one I super glued in uh, with maybe less than ideal results. Uh, but the other three were just fine. But as you can see, the wiring is very easy. So you're just basically taking all of the positive terminals and connecting them in, in, in parallel, and then all of the negative terminals and connecting them in parallel. So that's how all of that connects. It's very straightforward. Uh, I'm sure you can figure that out. Just need a decent pair of wire strippers and uh, you know, an inexpensive crimper, terminal crimper, to set that up. And it all works fine. 
But I've got the uh, the positive and negative leads coming from the DC module up through this little hole I drilled here, and the black common is going to the uh, with the other uh, commons on the uh, inverter, and then the red is going to the uh, this side of the positive on the 50 amp circuit. All I really need to do is to energize this breaker here, and let's just see if we get some power. Okay, that's cool. We get 13.1 volts. Let's make sure we've got inverter power. Okay, inverter is showing 13.0 volts. So let's go ahead and energize the charge controller, and it is coming on. That's cool. I'm reading 13.2 volts. So we got 13.2, 13.1, and 13.0. So this is where it's kind of interesting if we were to take our multimeter here and just get a reality check on that. 13.08 volts. So we are just a hair below 13.1. This is obviously has a uh, precision of one tenth, so it's just rounding up. So this is actually fairly precise. Um, this is also one tenth. It happens to be rounding down. So if you look at between the inverter and the charge controller, 13.2, 13.0, I'm actually kind of right in the middle of these two values. This is slightly high. This is slightly low. And this one is actually pretty much right on uh, within two hundredths, um, right on the money. So anyway, I think that's all the damage we can do tonight. So uh, since it's dark out, we have to wait till tomorrow and hope we get some decent sun. And I can hook up some solar panels and uh, get this thing charging. All right, got some nice morning sun and I am putting power into the solar generator here. So I am charging my Amper Time 100 amp hour battery. So let's launch the uh, Charge Pro. This is Charge Pro 2.0. This is the app that you can use to Bluetooth monitor the Bouge RV charge controller. And I've already got my Bluetooth connection established here. So we are getting 125, 124 watts currently into the um, into the battery right now and 9.4 amps and my battery voltage is 13.5 amp your time gives you a really nice little matrix that shows you the state of charge based on the battery voltage and you can see there at the top of the list at 13.5 i am roughly at 100 percent or approximately at 100 percent so these numbers are all approximations they're not exact numbers let's do some testing here let's actually put an ac load on the inverter and see if we can uh, find out how you know how it reacts when we start actually drawing some significant wattage out of this thing. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the hair dryer here. I'm gonna put it on warm heat and low. And see, so we're drawing nine percent load. Go ahead and try pulling a high fan with medium heat. About forty-seven percent. Put the hot hot, hot element on. A little over 50, 67 percent low. This should be pulling about 1,400 watts right now, and this inverter is capable of 2,000 watts continuous. That's cool. All right, time to test the thing that I'm not super confident about. I have got here my one of my 12 volt refrigerators, and uh, it's currently off, as you can see. So I'm not a hundred percent sure that the fuses that are attached on these uh, with the, that came with the wiring with these little sensors and that's these guys right here I don't know what size fuses those are I couldn't figure that out from the uh, product spec and I didn't take the little assembly apart to look so we're gonna find out if I blow a fuse <laughs> so if suddenly this goes out uh, we'll know because there's one main uh, positive wire here with a fuse feeding the power connector here so if this fuse blows everything else is dead so what we're going to do is turn that off I'm going to plug this in to this socket and we're going to find out if I can power the refrigerator or not. So let's turn this on. All right. And all right, actually we're good. And you can see that's the internal temperature now. So the compressor is actually running. This is a very quiet unit. This is the new air 48 quart. So cool. That works. I am powering the fridge uh, off of this uh, AC or off of this little DC module here. I wasn't sure that this fridge was going to pull too much power. So clearly it does not. So that's that's excellent. 
really happy with this setup. As I mentioned originally, I kind of designed this so that I could expand this at some point if I wanted to. I already have 2000 watt continuous 4000 watt uh, inverter. And so it'd be very easy for me to add just a second battery. So if you're curious what this 100 amp hour equates to in terms of watt hours, like a lot of portable power stations are rated at, just multiply 12 times 100 amp hours and you get watt hours. So 1200 watt hours is the rated capacity for this battery. So I could add another uh, 100 amp hour battery and I would get 2400 watt hours of capacity with the second battery. I wouldn't need to change the sign or the, uh, the inverter. I really wouldn't need to change anything because if I put the batteries in parallel, um, I'm, I'm simply going to, I'm going to maintain uh, 12 volts and then my um, charge controller absolutely can handle another 200 watts of input easily since this is a 40 amp charge controller. The uh, 40 amp actually refers to the uh, output capacity, so it can max out at 40 amps uh, in terms of sending uh, current to the battery. But easily you can handle uh, a couple of 200 watt panels with this, no problem at all. In fact, you can handle a fair amount more than that. So hopefully you got the sense that this is actually a very doable project and something you can definitely handle if you just take your time and do a little bit of research to make sure that you got your wires gauged properly so that whatever system you end up setting up is safe to operate. Um, I will be going into some more uh, information on another video on the Ampere Time uh, 100 amp hour battery and also another video that'll be more specific to the um, charge controller from Bouge RV, that 40 amp charge controller right there. I'm gonna get into the, uh, the app and kind of the configuration options and talk a little bit more about what you can do with that charge controller, because it's very cool. Then of course I've got the AC inverter. There was really not any configuration options on the AC inverter um, other than the, you know, the remote control, which I think I showed you when I was doing some of the other little bits and pieces, but we didn't really need the remote control in this setup, but it's really great if you're actually setting up a shed uh, system or an RV system, something like that, then uh, this is gonna be kind of tucked away out, out of reach and it would be nice to have that remote control, which uh, it does come with a pretty long cable for that. So it's pretty handy. And as I mentioned, I'll put uh, links to all this stuff in the description below if you wanna go check out and see how much this stuff costs. And then, uh, you know, maybe you can tweak the system to better suit whatever needs that you have. So anyway, thanks for joining me. If you found any of this useful, I would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up on the video, it super does help. And uh, consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber. That's all I got for you. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.